with around 2100 horsepower and a brand new personal best trap speed of 222 mile an hour, this freshly built English Racing R35 GTR is certainly impressive. We're here with Lucas from English Racing to find out a little bit more about what makes this GTR so fast. <laughs> Lucas, obviously in the last few years we've seen the number of fast, powerful GTRs skyrocket. It seems like a platform uh, that's really been quickly adopted. But of course at some point we start running into some limitations with how far we can go in terms of power levels and one of those is the engine block. Right. So you can talk to us about what the limitations on the stock VR38 block are? So I guess you know, we're always breaking parts. That's kind of the limit. So even when we were 1,500 horsepower, that was a challenge. And now we're, you know, well, some cars are closer to 3,000 horsepower, and 1,500 um, is no big deal anymore. Um, of course, the billet block, um, you know, head gasket technology, you know, some little science project tricks in the head. Um, but the blocks seem like once you get past about 17, 1,800 horsepower, you know, the the you can just tell the, the stock block is just flexing so much that you know you have head gasket problems, you have bearing problems. Um, also, the dry sump super critical once we're getting up over this 1,500 some horsepower. So. Anyway, that's I, I think one of the things I'll come back to there is we've seen a lot of the manufacturers these days, really cast iron blocks are almost a thing of the past. Right. Everyone switched to aluminium. It's great for lightweight, but of course when we're trying to start making double, triple the power of the stock engine, yeah. the flexibility of the alloy block is the issue. And one of those first steps that we see a lot of uh, engine builders go to is to simply fit a set of ductile iron sleeves yeah. in place of the factory liners. So how far does that get you with the VR38 block? Well, a lot of guys would be almost a stock block with uh, you know either a stroker crank, and then a lot of times when you do the liners more for just be becoming a bigger bore because it's a nitrile or a nitride coating in there, you know. So um, honestly, ETS knows a lot more about different style of dry sleeve versus you know, and, and I'm, I don't keep track of all of the differences. I know that really the stock block on stock bore can go just as far and a lot of times the sleeving um, seems like it's more uh, you know, to either fix a motor or to uh, get a bigger bore out of it. You know? I think the other thing we also see is that sometimes if you're not using a machinist that really understands the sleeving process and can work to very fine tolerances, mm -hmm. a sleeving process can actually cause more trouble than it solves, would that be fair? Yeah, definitely, definitely and then of course ETS has in-house machinists and they work really close with the machinists that's local to them and so and then of course it, you know they disassemble all their own motors and get to see all their own problems and uh, figure out what not to do. <laughs> so. Okay so in terms of the rest of the engine components uh, is there anything particularly special that the VR38 needs to stay alive north of 2000 horsepower? Well it's all like right now most um, you know, we need a crankshaft. Most of these are the 4 one, so they're, uh, I don't know what the stroke is, but they're a stroker crankshaft. And um, the stock crank around 13, 1400 horsepower can break. But even a stroker crank, when you're running a 2000 horse, probably uh, you know, 30, 40 pass is a good chance that crank's cracking. You know, we haven't seen one break. You know, I ran into this in the Evo back in the day where my machinist was checking for cracks. And he said, oh, it's cracked, get another one. You know, pretty soon we're like, you know, we'll just keep running it until it broke, and that one never broke. Sometimes, uh, well, you, you don't know, it doesn't hurt you, but of course, when you, when you actually know a part is cracked, uh, you really have to go and, and replace it. Now, you've also mentioned there the head gasket technology, again with turbocharged engines, as we've seen turbo technology improve over the last decade as well, right. boost levels have increased, right. and really, often with these engines, the limiting factor on how much power we can make, assuming the block will hold together, is yeah. physically clamping the head to the block. Right. Uh, now I know there's, there's potentially some secrets in there as well, but can you give us some idea of what direction you've gone in development there? Well, somewhat, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the best head studs there are, you know, we O-ring the heads. Um, there is some science on the proper placement of that O-ring, so I'm not gonna go into that. Sure. But either way, uh, you know, O-ringing gets you a long ways. Um, also, the tuning's a big, big deal. Um, a lot of guys out there, I am under a personal believer, once you probably approach close to 50 pounds on most cars, even like on E98 fuel or VP import, you are 
approaching the octane of limit of that fuel. And so most of my cars that go past 50 pounds are all methanol, and the methanol is definitely a game changer in being able to push the limits of the engines. So Now in terms of the, the fuel that you choose to run, that obviously plays a big part on the compression ratio that you can run with the engine. So can you tell us where you're at with this and what you'd change for an ethanol versus pump gas versus methanol setup? Well, it's that's... So I, if you're like, a, like, let's say a stock turbo record kind of guy or something, of course you're going to go through the roof maybe on compression. We honestly go down in compression um, because of the boost levels we can run and the size of the turbocharger, the compression ratio is more damaging than finding power somewhere else. So, so you're safer to run a lower compression ratio and run more boost and try and stay away from that knock, knock level right, area? Or just not even necessarily the knock, but just you just have a lot of pressure in there. You know, of course me, I feel a lot of times you can, it's, you don't see knock, but there's just too much pressure in there, you know. And so, uh, so either way, to me, if most of our high compression engines that we build are actually guys that are like 3586, or they're trying to uh, 3580, um, they're like a, a smaller turbo guy that's like trying to be the fastest guy on the smallest turbo, right? So you're going to do a bunch of radical stuff. But the level we're at with these, you know, huge, you know, we're 83, 85s, 86, 85s, you know, twins. It's like um, we don't need to find that last uh, 50 horse or 100 horse. So. In terms of where these engines are at now, you know, we've mentioned this particular one sitting probably 2,100 horsepower right. and uh, you, you're not really leaning on it, it is a fresh build so right. uh, this is the first event for the car, you've already gone 222 mile right. an hour with a little bit more up your sleeve. Yeah. But in terms of like outright limits, where do you sort of see uh, the power limit for the VR38 package uh, ending up? You know, I'm, I'm not a person to ever give opinions of how far something can go. I think like the level of uh, the other car that I drive, it's you know estimated close to 3,000 horsepower. You asked me a year ago, I'd say no, or a couple years ago, no way that we could ever do what we're doing. So as of right now, though, that you know we're almost turbocharger limited at the moment. So bigger turbos, the motors are taking it. You know, but they do disassemble that motor after every event, go through it. You know, and so. Um, and then they definitely always find something they don't like and then they figure out how to re-engineer it in some way and then we try it again. And of course you've just mentioned there the turbocharger as well and really the, the turbos are the key to the, the airflow and that's where we get the power from right. so realistically the engine's there just to hopefully be reliable and hold together. Right. So of course as we go to bigger turbochargers the problem we have then is it increases the boost threshold or lag is another way of referring to it. Right. So uh, is there a sort of a, a limit there where uh, we're just not going to be able to spool a bigger turbocharger? You know we haven't found it yet. The, the, the fact that you know the six-speed transmission in the GTR shifts so fast I mean, once it's spooled it's on. You know it doesn't come out of the power. You know if we don't launch the car and like we roll on it in first gear it really doesn't hit full boost until almost the top of second gear. You know, but um, on the dyno, they're full boost around 6,507. But once they're on, they're good. So right now we haven't experienced, you know, and we're only, these bigger motors, we're only revving them right now like 85 or six. They could really could rev 95 if we wanted. And so then, um, that, you know, a bigger turbo, we may go there. And then of course, there's always nitrous if you have to, but. Sounds like realistically, there's still a lot more development left in the VR38 platform. It seems like people are still pouring the money in and that's why the development's insane. You know, I, I don't know how many million, that's why the consumer is so lucky in this platform is because the, all these products are there from guys like ETS, T1, AMS, you know, the Dubai guys. And then, I mean, there's so many millions of dollars that have been poured into this one platform and it just allows everybody to reap the rewards of the, um, you know, so we'll see, you know, bill of blocks were almost 30,000, now they're down to 22,000. You know, it used to be a training that could do 1,500 horse was almost 24,000, now they're only 14,000, you know, so the costs are coming down and, and there's a lot more products. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And these things are still on the showroom floor today. So nine years, so it's not gonna stop. Uh, it's really exciting yeah. to see where, where they are going to and how fast the cars are. Yeah. Look, uh, we, we look forward to seeing how much faster you can push for the rest of today yeah. and hopefully you go a bit quicker than that 222 mile yeah. an hour. Thanks for the time to chat to us there, Lucas. All right, thank you.
you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.